Today is Saturday, November 18, 2023. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Survivor 45, Week 8. We do two shows a week here at Survivor Fans Podcast. We do a recap on Wednesdays, and on Saturdays, it's time for Listener Feedback. Time to turn it over to the super fans and get their take, what they observed, what they might have seen that we missed in the recap, and any predictions they might have to help me in my quest to score highly in JSFL because it's really about helping me gain a better score I see. in JSFL. That's all about you. <laughs> I am right. the main character. You are. <laughs> and you are a character. <laughs> Hey, we have a quick update that we wanted to mention. Well, we will no longer have a post office box listed, so you'll notice that in the show notes. It's not, not going to be there anymore. They want, was it like almost $200 almost a year? Almost $200 a year. It's for just... that, and we can't afford that right now. So <laughs> we're going to have to pass on the snail mail option. Having to cut expenses. Yes. <laughs> so heads up, and uh, I've already taken it out of the show notes. It'll still be in the old ones because I would have to go edit a thousand different show notes. More than a thousand. Yeah, to to get rid of it. But going forward, it's not going to be an option anymore. Yeah, okay. and it just shows if you want to contact us the email address. So and that, voicemail. we rarely ever we might have gotten one or two cards a year. So it dropped off over the last couple of years. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything changed after when COVID hit, and then after that, it yeah, so wasn't used as much. So we just couldn't really see paying the post office an extra 200 bucks a yeah, year. Yeah, no, nope, that's no just sense. not an option right now. Yeah. Anything else we need to cover before we jump in? I think that was our only actual business. Okay. How many super fans are we checking in with 19. this week? 19. Let's kick it off with Pete. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Pete from Boston calling here. Wow. What a very, very awesome episode here. Like what happened with the auction. Did not expect to see Kelly going home. So I am going to let out a great big wham, wham, bam. Oh, man. What an episode. Wow. So let me start out quickly with the auction. I loved how folks and production, whoever came up with the idea, the thing where they had to find money in the jungle there hidden and for a certain time and to see how much they ended up with. I thought that was a great twist instead of giving them a 500 like it used to be. I liked that they didn't have any advantages so no one could hold on to their money. And the twist where you didn't know when it would stop but probes new made it even better. I'm not quite a fan, you know, again, of the lose a vote thing. But then again, I thought they added a great layer. And you could see how it panned out there. Some delicious food that I would have spent all my money for sure on. And who would have thought Bruce would be the one to lose his vote? But I am going to say, though, even though we know Bruce is probably going to be a goat and he's pissed everyone off, but to his credit, I'm sure you guys talked about it, he won immunity when it mattered, when his back was against the wall. However, I so wanted Mama Julie to win. I thought Julie had it. She was just shot, but she battled and was the last woman standing. I really was shocked for Kelly, and you could see she didn't see it coming, as did Kendra. 
so I don't know, Kendra might be on the hot seat now. And it was not a good episode for my guy, Jake. I don't I think Jake now, either he'll be next or some may see him as a goat too, because he sort of ticked a lot of people off trying to find the idol. It didn't work. Played his shot in the dark. It turns out he wouldn't have needed it anyway because he only got three votes. We'll see. I don't think anyone's going to want to work with him. I think, though, they could have gotten rid of D, or they could have split up the Drew and Austin saga there, too. So I don't know. We'll see how it all works out. Emily seemed a little bit villainous here. I gotta say, bye-bye to the Women's Alliance. I had a feeling that was all talk. Emily, I don't know how far she'll go. Right now, my favorite is crazy as it might sound. I do like Mama Julie, but I think you gotta watch out for D. I really do. And I know Drew might might have been the initiator with this uh, Kelly epic blind side, but I still think you're going to watch out for D. I want to see now if we have Ponderosa clips. I doubt it because I'm, I'm betting Kelly, unlike Caleb, is going to be very upset and bitter. And she'll scold whoever is in the final three for sure. We'll have to check out her interviews too to see how bitter she is. But it was a great episode. Loved it and a good auction. Take care. Woo. Woo. Thanks, Pete. Kelly did not seem even remotely bitter in her Mm-mm. exit interviews. Yeah, not at all. So I had, that's, disappointed, maybe, but <laughs> yeah, she was she was definitely disappointed. But she she was clear about what had happened with the numbers and that she had been losing her advantages and her strategic partners for a while now. So ever since she lost access to Brando, things weren't really breaking her way, she said. So that wasn't mm. it that was she said when you're that depleted out there, you absolutely have to have someone to bounce things off of. And she just sort of kept losing those opportunities for really strategic people to work with and of course with Bruce losing his vote that just messed things up further she she said that she thought there was the potential that they could try to get Emily I don't know if there was any reality in that but as soon as Bruce lost his vote and the numbers weren't there she said Emily's very pragmatic when it comes to numbers (laughs) <laughs> as yeah. a financial analyst and there was nothing there so there was no play therefore she was she was feeling worried yeah there's a extra video with jake and you can see him trying to lie again a deception where he yells out like he had actually found an idol he yeah. and him and bruce were off looking trying to find something for him and he tried for that fake out so he's He's got that that liar tag is going to be on him. It's going to be hard for him. I think, like Pete was saying, he he may have started it entering into some goat territory. Well, they didn't totally buy that he did find one, but I'm not sure they totally bought he didn't either. Yeah, and they had a a safe backup plan. So exactly there you go. So. Thanks. It might have worked. Thanks, Pete. Next up, we got a call from Christiana. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. This is Christiana from Massachusetts calling in with my feedback. It's Saturday morning, and I just finished the episode, and I haven't had a chance to listen to the feedback yet, so apologies if there's some redundancies. But I loved that episode. Starting with the auction, I loved how they did it. I loved the running for the money aspect. I thought the meals were a little lame compared to what's been in the past, but as they're not giving them any food at all, I guess that's comparable to the theme of this new hardcore era of Survivor. I also was thinking that at first it seemed like, oh man, Bruce not putting effort in to getting money worked out in his favor. But then I don't know if this is a fallacy of the game or if this was the goal and they expected this, but he ended up being in the still in the worst position because he couldn't outbid anybody. So then he's left with that money. So I'm curious if in future seasons, if they keep this trend up, how it will play out. But I really enjoyed it. Other random thoughts. Kendra's really annoying me. I think she thinks she's really awesome and cool and great. And she's just, it's just too much. It's too much mugging for the camera. And her like, oh, I did play the best auction ever. Yeah, it was obvious that that was the strategy to bid all your money right off the bat. Everyone did that the first chance they got. I 
am bummed to see Kelly go. I really enjoyed her, but I do think it was a smart move on the part of this Reba Four alliance. And I'm curious how or when they will turn on each other. There's a little glimpse of that in the next time on, but it could be a red herring or it could be a not yet situation. But I would love to see Dee and Julie turn on Austin and or Drew. And I think that it'll make for great TV. In the meantime, I don't know how much longer Jake and Bruce can withstand this situation and Kendra for that matter. I feel like Bello's probably done. Oh, and Katora. She was on Bello too. So yeah, I don't really know. They're kind of like free agents, but in not in a good way. Like they're not leveraging their position properly. Right. So we'll see. And lastly, I also wanted to correct myself for something that I previously said in a feedback based on information that I am just learning. But has Shot in the Dark always been consistently a one in six chance? I thought it was a one in however many people are left chance. So either I was wrong about that or that's they changed that at some point. But anyway, Jake had a one in six shot. Didn't work out. He didn't pull a Caleb, although I thought he was all in good fun with, oh, can Caleb blow on this and all of that. But the chances of that happening twice in one season would be wild. So didn't work out for Jake, but he didn't need it in the end. Looking forward to hearing what everyone else has to say. Have a great week. Bye. I thought it was a one in six every time. Uh, that's the way I remember it too. Sorry, I didn't research that uh, to know for sure, but pretty pretty confident because there was the big deal about who I f- forget who it was in season forty one uh, was saying the decimal it, number associated with it. So yeah, uh, that's that how I deal. remember it. Is it's one in six every time, mm. and uh, unless more than one. People play it all at once, but... A couple other things that Kelly said in her exit interview. She was unaware how close Austin and Drew were. That's interesting that they hid that that well. And so, therefore, wasn't clued in to that bigger group of four with Austin, Drew, Dee, and Julie. And she said that her and Dee were getting along really well. And they were, like, snorkeling together, braiding each other's hair and all that. So there was some potential. She said she thought that's why... She's, we saw the hesitancy with D when Austin was pitching voting for Kelly. Hmm. Well, the bottom line is, is I'm sure she realized, well, if I'm going to win, they all have to go at some point. So even though I like her, I like hanging out with her. Eh. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Christiana. Up next, we have a call from Robert. Hey, Joanne, Stacy, and Survivor fans. This is Robert from Canada calling in. I absolutely love this episode of Survivor, and I have to say, I think it's my favorite of the season so far. And Joanne, Stacy, what was that you guys were saying? There was only like 12 fans that got a vote-off point this week? That's incredible. Yeah. That must mean that those fans that actually guess correctly, they must be like the top one percent of the upper echelon of survivor fans so smart almost on like the drew basile level of intelligence i'd have to say so yeah anyway i was one of those 12 that got a vote off point this week and yes i felt the need to brag just a little bit because i don't get vote off points that often so that definitely contributed to my enjoyment of this episode but all in all it was just a great episode and i have to give it to the editors they did a really good job because going into tribal council i thought there was a chance i was going to get a vote off on kelly but when uh, jake played a shot in the dark i was pretty sure that he was going to be the one going home so it was nice to see a blind side happen and it was really nice to be surprised something that doesn't often happen in the new era so i think this episode was fantastic i thought that the immunity challenge was really good and part of me wonders if my usb austin if he let off just like a little bit like i'm not saying he threw that challenge but i don't think he needs to make himself a big immunity threat this early in the game because i think he's gonna have to win a lot of immunities if he wants to make it to the end of the game so i just wonder if maybe he could have put in a bit more of an effort or who knows maybe he gave it his all at the same time it's hard to say it's nice to have the survivor auction back i'm with you joanne i think the food options were a little bit weak it seems like they need a chef out there on the island i think the survivor pizza even looked worse than normal and it would have been nice to see something like a cheeseburger but i guess we're in the new era so even the food options have to be a little bit subpar i felt bad for drew i like candy as much as the next person but when you're starving and haven't had anything to eat i can imagine candy would probably make you feel terrible so i'd almost want to chance it and try the fish eyes instead but if you could stomach them at least they have nutrition in them but anyways great episode and for next week i'm not sure who 
who I'll put as my vote off. Obviously, anybody that was left out of this vote could be vulnerable. And I'm thinking that we might see this Katura and Bruce feud come to a head. And Bruce has an idol, and she doesn't. So I think Katura could be a, a very obvious vote out next week. Maybe Jake will still be vulnerable. But I think I'm leaning towards Katura right now. But I do look forward to hearing all the other fans' feedback. And that's it for me. You guys just take care. Thanks, Robert. Probst in his podcast said that they actually set up a kitchen out there when they that's how they did it for the auction so that they could make some of that stuff fresh and that they had like refrigeration and ovens to heat things up and they had people there ready to prep things although like Robert was saying, you would not think so, given the visual on that slice yeah, of pizza. Yeah, that pizza. Yeah, that, look, that was, mm. And not that Survivor has a history of delivering fantastic pizza, but that just did not look well, appetizing at all. Well, I've never seen all. any look that bad. Yeah, that was a Red Baron frozen pizza is worlds above whatever the slice was that Austin got. If you say so. I don't know anything about Red Baron. We've had it before. It's good. We have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, uh, for a frozen pizza, for like whatever it is, five well, bucks. We get good Trader stuff. Joe's frozen pizza because we those like Those are better. It. Yeah, we like those and to add our own stuff you, to them. Yeah. But that, yeah, that was pretty abysmal looking. It's just, it was really sad. So to hear Prope say that, hey, we set up a kitchen and we got people working on stuff. And as soon as I knew how many things were, I went over to tell them so they knew exactly what to prep for. And Well, the shark cutie board that looked pretty good they made that look appealing and mm-hmm. but definitely uh, put some effort into that right and even the uh, fish eyes looked pretty <laughs> but <laughs> they'd be like no yeah. but anyway the pizza i just thought man that doesn't even look good that ain't right something ain't right something ain't right with that what did they put on it yeah. What is that? It's the wrong color. Anyway. Thanks, Robert. Next up, we got a call from Justin. Hey, Joanne and Stacy and all the super fans. This is Justin from Michigan. The auction changes for auction 2.0 were mostly good, but I think they can still be improved and modified in the future seasons. You could either add an element of chance for an advantage or disadvantage. Maybe you uncover a mini game that you have to take the chance is it an advantage or a disadvantage and then you play the little game of chance and it's a chance to have either an advantage or a disadvantage that way there's some incentive to save money for the chance at an advantage either that or they need to eliminate the lose a vote of disadvantage so that everybody doesn't just spend the max to get rid of their money when bruce got pick to eat the chocolate cake all i could think of was bruce from matilda was shoving his face with cake but bruce actually kind of ate it slowly and jake was the one shoving his face so that was kind of funny i did not like the keep your arms straight rule at the immunity challenge i thought it gave jeff a little bit too much discretion the matter of keeping your arms straight or slightly bent is very subjective whether you have it slightly bent or perfectly straight and that makes a big difference so i think they for that type of challenge they either need to just let them hold it however they want maybe they could increase the weight so it doesn't last as long or just allow them to move it however they want when they bend the arm it engages the forearm and biceps more when you keep it straight it engages the shoulders and back more so it's just working different muscle groups but it'll still still tough on the upper body i think jake stumbles at tribal Council, council were mostly acting as his last ditch effort. Whether it worked or not, I don't think it makes a difference, but I think it does show that he's at least trying everything, you know, thinking, thinking of everything he can do to stay in the game. Drew lost his safety without power that only, I believe, he and Austin knew about. This might be a missed opportunity. You don't want to use it on yourself if you're not in danger because it puts you in the spotlight. But could he have given it to somebody, gain trust with them, and possibly give it to somebody who you think is going to vote on the other side of you to take that vote off of them? There and then you're go. kind of gaining their trust, but also eliminating their vote. So I think there was a way to use that. I just don't like advantages not being used at all. Austin's in a great spot. He could control the next couple votes and maybe up to three, the next three votes if he wins individual immunity and then uses his two idols. I think it's likely he gets too confident 
and goes home with one or both of those idols. Hope not, though, because I like Austin. Who from the Reba 5 is most likely to turn on the rest as old Bello gets picked off? Drew has been shown to be the most loyal and honest. Could he get burned by Dean and Julie? Jake or Bruce seem like the most har- likely targets next week. If Bruce uses his idol, I could see him targeting and taking out Katura. Austin, Drew, and Emily seem like the power trio to pay attention to. Kelly said in her exit interview she had a plan to make Bruce think that there was knowledge without power advantage in the game. And then she would take his idol and either vote him out or use it to save him and then blindside Austin. So she was thinking two or three steps ahead and it makes sense why they wanted her out. Sad to see her go, but I've been really liking what Jake adds as a character these past few episodes as well. Looking forward to what everybody else has to say. Thanks. Thanks, Justin. I had totally spaced that about the safety without power, that it was only good through Final Ten. Yeah, but it's no good anymore. It has Um, expired. Yeah, unless uh, he was able to make somebody think it had some power. If there are a way to share the scroll but have deleted that portion where it says... Well, or use something else, some other scroll with it. But make, it make somebody think it was an actual idol or, you know, like Austin could give him one of his two idol scrolls or papers to go with the um, with his. But the safety without power advantage was basically just a scroll. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't two there things. There was no object. No. Oh, okay. Well, I I obviously didn't remember that part. Okay, well, never mind. There probably isn't a way to use it then. And unless it the way it's formatted, I don't remember how it's written on the scroll. If there were a way to, to tear off the part that says, the last time this can be played is when there are 10 people left in the game. Since it's on the same line with something else and you'd have to cut it weird, I don't think that would work. It would be obvious something was cut off. All right. Thanks, Justin. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Rajmi. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all my survivor friends. Now, that was a brilliant episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was so good to see the auction back. And I did love the twist of finding the money, running around in the jungle, getting those bamboo tubes. And I enjoyed every bit of it. And also the twist about if you have most money left, then you're going to be losing your vote. I never thought I'd see Bruce win the immunity challenge, but I was so happy because I had him as safe. I thought he might play his idol, but so that was a safe point I got. Now, I was so sad to see Kelly go because I had nearly chosen her as my USB and then I went and chose Katura. So thanks to the Facebook group, I got a correct vote out point i always read what nina and jeremiah are saying and i think oh i'm going to copy them too (laughs) who's doing well this season now i'm really impressed with miss d i think she is there and could be a winner and get there to the end another person who's really impressed me is of course austin Quietly, he seems to be working from the the shadows and he's got rid of both the people, Jay Maya and Kelly now. So he's got a fully charged idol. Who will go next? I have a feeling it's not going to be Bruce again. It could be either Kendra or Jake or uh, maybe Jake could keep limping on till the end and they might try and get rid of Drew. Because Drew does come across as a mastermind and I did see the secret scene where he seems to be strategizing while he's still asleep. (laughs) That was funny. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this season and looking forward to what everybody else have to say. And thank you, Joanna Stacey. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Rajmi. Good job. Next up, we got an email from Lena in Estonia. I'm still watching, still listening, and loving both shows. I just wanted to say power to the chocolate cake. All the people who had chocolate cake lasted the longest in the immunity challenge. (laughs) My hopes are that there will be some cool idol plays. Bruce is gone, although Bruce lasting longer than Katura would be funny. And someone noticing that Emily has too good a story to take her to the end. All the best to everyone. Thanks, Lena. Great to hear from you again. 
Good job. Next up, we got a call from David in Oklahoma. Hey, Joe and Stacy, this is David from Oklahoma, currently in Illinois on vacation <laughs> to talk about this episode. And besides me being excited that my boy Jake is still in the game, I don't have too much to talk about besides what could possibly happen next. Because I'm honestly split on what I'm going to decide. Because I think Jake has a good chance of staying in the game at the moment. Because we've got Bruce and Dee and possibly Emily. Because we all know that Dee, when she has a target, she sticks to it. And another thing to ask is, does Dee have a grudge against Jake or is that Julie? Because it seems to be like just Julie. And, oh, the auction where I thought it was a good play by Jake to give both Julie and Bruce some cake. Because I thought, in my opinion, that was kind of like, hey, Bruce, I gave you cake. Now, you give me your idol at Tribal Council, and maybe to soften things off with Julie, I don't know. But besides that, all I have left to say is the challenge of lifting one-third of your body weight. I think I'd stand a good chance, and for a future Survivor player like me one day, I might have to practice. I'm going to enjoy my vacation. Love the podcast. See you, Joanna Stacey. Thanks, David. Yeah, have a great vacation. Yeah, for sure. Next up, we got a call from Nora. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. It's Nora from Canada. I'm in a much better mood. I got over the <laughs> missing Caleb and being frustrated that the producers aren't letting them play and all that. And enjoyed the episode thoroughly. And then at the end, they said three people are going to be voted out. And it's just like, oh, here we go again. Because if they left the next thing alone, if they didn't do this three vote outs, if they left it like a normal episode show, should be. I want to see how the, how people start to turn on Reba. As I said last time, that Reba original four, that was unbreakable. Like when you get two couples that absolutely swear to be loyal, it's very, very hard because they have six members now with Katura and Emily. I think Kelly did herself in, okay? If you recall with the Caleb vote out episode, Kelly said no to Kendra, Katura, everybody about kicking out Bruce. And then this episode, Kelly was whining to Bruce when he said, you're my number one. And she said, yeah, but uh, it comes with your baggage kind of thing. Your stink is on me, sort of. But she didn't use those words. Yes, yeah, she did it to herself. She raised her profile too high by having the power to say no to people. And obviously that's going to leak back to the winning four. And I think Kelly did it to herself. She never should have taken on the managerial road the episode before this one. Otherwise, my USB Austin, I think he's going to win the whole thing. And Drew just did a fantastic maneuver. And silence is golden. Silence is golden. They kept that nice and quiet from the other three who voted Jake. And that's that's all I have to say. Thank you for everything you do. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Nora. I have some good news for you. It's not that three people are being voted out. It's that three people will lose their vote. So very, very different. Yeah. They won't be allowed to vote, yeah. which was Three people scary. being voted out was, would be quite intense. I'm excited they're um, not doing that. The, <laughs> that would be a scoring a bit, nightmare. A bit, bit too much, <laughs> yeah. Even three people losing their vote doesn't... I'm not really keen on that. I can't no, see how this either. works well in the overall context of the game and letting them play. Thanks, Nora. Next up, we got a call from David. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, it's David in Pittsburgh. And just like Jeff Probst, I've changed my attitude. When I saw Jeff slash that bag of rice and refuse to let Drew exchange something for his candy, I thought, I'm, I'm too much of a nice guy. And like Jeff, I'm no longer Mr. Nice Guy. So I'm coming <laughs> here with questions rather than answers. Usually I come to tell everybody what to do and who to vote. And, and what's going on. But now I'm coming to you for answers. So I am confused. I can't find these answers anywhere. So here's my question. Bruce has an immunity idol. Drew has the walkaway idol. But what does Austin have? I am so confused. I, I, I'm i pretty sure he has one immunity idol. And then he has the amulet. But I don't and I, I think it's an immunity item, but I don't understand what it was originally. So when they, when. 
Kelly and J. Maya and Austin got that amulet, what was it worth by itself? And then when there were only two of them, what was it worth? Couldn't couldn't uh, Kelly and Austin put it together somehow and make it a powerful idol? It didn't have to be that Kelly was eliminated to get it to be this powerful idol, right? So I'm very confused. I'm, I was looking up on your page to find out if there are any answers. There weren't. I demand answers. And I have a question <laughs> about Katora and Kendra's vote. Did they know that the group was going to vote for Kelly and they were the backup plan on Jake? If so, then Kendra's tears and all that were great acting. But if not, they better get together with the old Bellow and figure out something to do because now they're down to four and the and Reba with Emily are up to five. And this is the second time, if if they didn't know, this is the second time that Emily lied to Kendra. She did the same thing with the Brando vote out. So I I don't know if those girls can trust the other t- the others at all now. And the Reba gameplay, I know Jake said that Austin's playing scared, which I, I, we haven't seen anything about that, but now it seems like Drew is stepping out and making all the game plans. So are Austin and Julie just following along with whatever he says? I mean, Dee seems to have her own opinion before she commits to anything. So I'm just wondering, who is the mastermind over on Reba? And the last thing is, at last we had a tribal council with the entire cast, so you can start to see where lines are being drawn. So of course, next week, three people are no longer going to have a vote. Anyway, I'm confused. Help me out. Somebody, super fans, Joanne and Stacy. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. All right. Thanks, David. So Austin has two immunity idols. One expires when it's final after final five, and then the other expires. The one that he just got, the powered up one, expires at final six. Yes. Originally, it was the amulet that was shared by Kelly and J. Maya and Austin. If they had chosen to play it together, they would all three have to go up to Jeff and give it to him. They could have gotten a single extra vote that they would have to decide what to do with. Mm -hmm. When J. Maya got voted out, Austin and Kelly could have played it, and they would have to go up and give it to Probes at Tribal Council, and they would have gotten a steal a vote advantage. Now that Kelly's been voted out, it's a fully powered up immunity idol, and Austin has two of them. Bruce has one and again like we are mentioning earlier Drew's safety without power expired. It was only good. Or Drew's walk away advantage. As David put it. Yeah. yeah. The It was only good while they were while there were ten people in the game. Yeah. So now, now there's expired. only nine so it's expired mm-hmm. out of play. And that's pretty much what's active. We yeah. don't know re- yet if Kendra and Katura were in on that, but I suspect the answer is no. I don't, I don't think they were. On what? The vote against oh, Kelly. No. Uh-uh. He asked if, no. if they were in on it. There's nothing that we've seen that suggests that. Yeah, because, uh, well, definitely they voted together, the three of them. Mm-hmm. Kelly, Katura, and Kendra, yeah. And uh, so Katura wasn't in on the vote with the others. I, I guess maybe they thought she, she might tip them off. Bruce well, might play been. an idol for her if he knew. Maybe Drew came back and told her and she just did it for cover. We don't know that yeah, yet. We but don't. We don't think that's actually the case. They they looked genuinely surprised. Yes, they did. Did we cover everything David asked? I believe so. Good deal. Thanks, David. Next up, we got an email from Marion, Maryland. Exciting episode with lots to think about and discuss. But like you, Joanne and Stacy, and many others, I lost my USB. I was looking forward to watching Kelly play, and I'm sorry to see her go so soon. Mm -hmm. I was so close. I had Jake as my vote out (laughs) pick. I am giving up hope of Bruce being voted out. At this point, I think he will hang on until the end as a somewhat smart player, but also as someone they think they can beat in the end. For next week, I'm thinking perhaps Katura will go home. She doesn't seem to have close connections with anyone at this point. Bello in general is not cohesive, and I don't see any strong bonds connecting them. I am 
so tired of the women's <laughs> alliance trope that seems to be brought up every season. Time to retire that concept unless it actually happens. It was fun to see the auction back. I'm glad Jeff found a way to fix it and make it viable again. I enjoyed the added fun of having them search for money in the jungle and start out with different amounts. I, too, was surprised there were no actual filling meals offered at the auction. The options seemed pretty light. Emily's item was the best. I would have loved that charcuterie platter and glass of wine if I were out there. I was a bit uncomfortable watching Jake, someone who we just learned had overcome a binge eating disorder, have to eat chocolate cake as fast as he could with his hands. Mm. Yeah, that that is disturbing. Yeah. Until next week. All right. Thanks, Mary. Uh, you know, it, it, it bothers me anyway with someone with a, that particular eating disorder to be out there starving. And we've talked to so many people through through the years and them telling us how they had problems with food when they got back. Yes. When they never had before. Very common. And that they couldn't stop eating. They they would buy two or three cakes while they were at the bed. You know. Stephanie, wasn't it? Yeah, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, There's two things that, that came up again and again when we were talking to them was the, there would be issues with food that they had to work through when they got back and... Rain. Rain. When and the rainy rain. seasons and yeah. the people that had to go through that, that they, it was like they a trigger. had PTSD around it, literally. The, especially the ones where they spent a lot of time in the, in in the, the rain. The wet. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Very wet. Yeah. Yep. Good deal. Thanks, Mary. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, it's Parker from Indiana. And that was insane. That was wild. I did not see that vote coming at all. Even when Drew suggested, let's vote Kelly. Ju- I, no way. No freaking way that that was actually going to happen. But Oh my goodness. And the, oh, the whole tribal. I was so worried. And I was, yes, Jake, yes. All his points were making. I was absolutely. And then, oh, the moment that I was, okay, I'm fine with Kelly going when she said, sometimes people, when she did the air quotes for safe vote and then the big move, and you have to find the line between that. Trying to justify playing a lazy game, basically. This isn't a big move. Also, keeping Caleb wasn't a big move. None of that is a big move. That is the line. That's the line you're speaking. You have to take risks in Survivor. Absolutely have to. It is a necessity. If you don't take any risks, you're not going to be rewarded. That's my fundamental belief of how you play Survivor. You can't just play it safe. You can't just, like Jake was saying, dogpile on every freaking player and, until you're, what, it's your big alliance left, and then what happens? Then your big alliance has to eat each other, and then you find out, oh, you're not in as great a spot as you thought you were. You have to use the bottom feeders. You have to do that. This is the smartest thing you could do. Keep those people around. That way you can move back and forth. And everybody's response to what Jake was saying, I, oh, I was fuming. I was getting madder and madder and madder, and then he played a shot in the dark, and I was like, oh, no, Jake, that's not going to work. It only works once. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's never going to be successful again. What are, you, what are you doing, buddy? And then, obviously, not safe, so he doesn't have a vote in there. Great. Now it's going to be some freaking plurality-type vote where his one vote could have changed the outcome, but instead he goes. Because, obviously, of course, that's, no, no, like, duh, of course that's what it is. And then, <laughs> and then it was Kelly out of nowhere, and I'm, oh, my goodness. That was crazy. <laughs> that was amazing. What a great episode. <laughs> I feel bad. She was a lot of people's winner picks. I really <laughs> liked Kelly, but why not? Also, the auction was back, and that was great. Could have done without the, the bamboo money hunt, but it was funny to see Bruce just not trying and then end up with the lowest amount of money, which also that twist I could have also done without. Really, just I think it should have been a completely normal auction, but at the front, Jeff does say there's not going to be any advantages because his thing with the select the, the number that says how many items there are doesn't really change anything about the auction because it always ended without warning. He was yep. always, guess what? That was the last thing. Yeah, it always ended without warning. So I thought that the whole like draw a number was unnecessary, but it was a fun auction. I'm just, I, I, I'm glad that it was back, especially with longer episodes. If you find different ways to fill that time, that's not just a journey or 
and a reward challenge or something like that thrown in an auction yeah super fun I, i'm here for it also austin has completed his sandwich revenge which <laughs> missed opportunity to throw a sandwich into the auction so austin could buy it that's all i got i will see you guys next time thanks parker there was a sandwich you know what? Kelly said she was not able to eat it. Why? She tried. Probst even gave her a little extra time. But her belly was full of French fries. Remember that big basket oh, of fries? Yeah. yeah. So, and she said that she did down the margarita. She <laughs> she did enjoy that, but she couldn't eat the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm. How well, ironic, huh? Well, and you can't eat peanut butter and jelly fast. <laughs> Not normally. Well, I can't. Yeah. It's like that takes a while. Good deal. Thanks, Parker. Next up, we got a call from Tito. Hello, Joanne, Stacy, and everyone else out there that's really enjoying Survivor again. This is Tito Burrito from Boston. I really just have a couple of observations and also a little bit about the auction. One, definitely excited about the auction, so I'll start there. With the auction, I did like the lose the vote that added a little tension, but I didn't like that it felt like immediately the strategy was just spend it all so that you weren't in in threat, like in harm's way. I felt like a couple of tweaks may be needed for this new survivor auction that they've birthed. Maybe they could actually bring back the opportunity for you to share your money or pool your money with other people, but maybe to the extent to where you couldn't give them all of your money to where you went to zero. This would incentivize people to maneuver money around and manage it and almost force other people to have more money, but also allow higher spending power so that someone could get something they need and get out of threat's way, but potentially put their partners in harm's way. I think that would be interesting. I didn't think it was necessary to have to lose the vote, but it did add a little attention. I like that. It was great. So one thing I was thinking of was, hey, Austin, look, you got your other idol now because you conveniently voted out the two people who uh, were in contention to get that idol up to full power. That was weird if they didn't bring that up at all in the episode. I mean, that's pretty much it for my general thoughts. I'll definitely contribute more later in the season. Excited to continue watching and seeing how this goes. I'm going to be honest with you, I think the next person to go is going to be Katora. I think that a whole bunch of idols are going to be played. Probably Bruce and Austin are going to play their idols. And then Katora is going to be on the wrong side. That's just my guess. Well, hope you all have a good one. Bye. Thanks, Tito. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Brandon. Hey there, Joanne and Stacy. It's Brandon from Indiana, and man, what a difference a week makes. I went from last week's kind of bummer situation to this week just really enjoying the show all around. I thought that the auction was a lot of fun. I'm curious if that one's going to continue exactly as it's built now going forward, or if they're going to have to make some modifications to keep it from just becoming a predictable list of just let's run down the people with the most money as we go item to item. Also, while I enjoyed the endurance challenge, and even last week's endurance challenge, I am a little bit curious if maybe production and, and and Jeff need to just be the ones to kind of suck it up and allow some of these endurance challenges to not be made so specific that they cannot go for a long time. I miss the dissolve shots between things and then updates on time at the bottom of the screen with an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Those were the endurance challenges that really made me impressed with these survivors. And I get that the factors have been changed to make that less uh, available, but it's just a little bit of a bummer when you compare it to old challenges like the poll challenge from last week to the older seasons uh, versus this one. And I know that they've made changes with the footholds and that sort of a thing, but it just, I wouldn't mind maybe giving the survivors a little bit more freedom to how they go about an endurance challenge than this week where it was very so specific with the straight arms and, 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 and such. I also loved Tribal Council. Obviously, I'm not super happy to lose my new USB, my replacement USB in Kelly, but I can't even be mad. That was such a fun tribal council to watch. I loved watching Jake throughout it and the way that he played his role and, and trying to kind of put some doubts in the minds of the other survivors with the way that he was speaking. I thought that was great stuff. I can't wait for next week, although I am very much ready to be upset about it because I saw the next on Survivor that they're going to lose three people's votes. And I can't believe that at this stage in the game, we're actually doing that. I don't understand the producer's insistence on these 
these six, seven person votes max. Just let people vote. I miss the old votes where it's maybe people weren't all on the same page and we had four or five people getting a vote. That that was fun to me. I don't understand why that's considered not fun or boring to the producers as it is currently. I'm also worried for Jake going forward, even though he's been such a fun player to watch. And I do wonder, I feel like we got another hint this week that maybe my thoughts from last week in Austin and D being the showmance this year might be the thing. We'll see. I feel like there, I, rem- I can't remember specifically right now, but I feel like I, there was something in the show this week that made me think, I think that's the way we're going. I think this season's been a lot of fun. I know there's some people that are kind of poo-pooing on it. I'm I am just enjoying it quite a bit, even with last week's bummer of an episode. I can't wait for next week, even with the possible challenge twist. We'll see what happens. Thanks, Brandon. I, that was in the next on where Austin mm-hmm. was saying that he couldn't he couldn't fathom voting for D. He enjoyed yeah, talking he to her and spending time spending with her time with too him. much. So yep, with the sparkle in his eye, he couldn't he couldn't consider Emily's proposal of targeting D. Yeah. The with the poll challenge, the thing that Jen reminded me of, I went back and looked at the one where Parvati was so casually asserting her dominance, holding the pole with one arm and one foot on the pole like that and the thing that struck me the most was those poles are like a half or a third of what the one was in the previous challenge hmm. well the uh, that foot, wouldn't be possible a lot bigger maybe a, a little bit bigger a lot wider i i don't know that it was that much different mm-hmm. the main thing was I it was it no problem for her was. to to have her arm sort of wrapped around it so she could hang off the side. Well, and her when foot was on the, on it below. She had it not wedged just a in toe. The, she could get a little side of her foot on there. Right. Yep. <clears throat> so, so those were bigger. Yeah. You have to go back it, and look made at it. More it. more difficult for sure. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Next up, we got a call from Bianca and Hayden. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. This is Bianca and Hayden from Adelaide. And we're back and just wanted to say thank you so much for giving us that detailed answer about the interviews. And we're just so grateful that you're still doing what you do because we just love hearing what everyone has to say and your lovely feedback. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, all um, better. Oh, nearly better, yeah, getting there. Still a bit croaky. Yeah, no, I've enjoyed a nice... We're, we're sitting outside out the front of our house enjoying enjoying a gin at the end of this beautiful spring day, so, yeah, yeah. No, things are good. Yep. Yeah, we're loving it. So what do you think? Of, are you happy with the uh, result? Well, I really did like the episode. I'm just a bit bummed about the Kelly vote out. It was a yeah. bit of a shock, like I think a few of us yeah. expected. Like, well, we like to. But I did really like it, but it was a smart move by Drew and Emily. Yeah, I think it was a smart move by them. But, yeah, I had a soft spot for Kelly. She's Bianca's also an intensive care nurse like Kelly and yeah. takes a lot of heart. And to do a job like that, it, it's very hard work work and it takes a special kind of person to do it so I, I liked her and, and I thought she was also a good player and was sad to see her go yeah. um, but also I liked the way Jake was playing too so when it came down to Jake and Kelly both looking like they were the targets it was a bit disappointing and we were gonna too. we were gonna lose either way with that yeah I had a soft spot for Jake as well and yeah Kelly was definitely playing the game that I would have liked to play if I ever get to play Survivor but uh, she just needed to suck it up and keep Bruce I know he is annoying and but he's a number and he's got an idol so they should have used that to their advantage and he's a goat so I but. was so sure when they focused on his idol in the previously on that that was going to come into play yeah. so I thought all through the episode I was thinking oh that Bruce's idol will be played either by after he won immunity I thought oh surely Jake will play it that would have um, been perfect yeah he's a wild card he, I know people think he's got no chance of winning but the same thoughts we had about Gabler a couple of mm. seasons ago and he yep. Good Nobody point. thought he had any chance, and then he ended up being somewhat satisfying winner, I guess. So yeah. you have to be careful. They can't take him for granted. No, yeah, don't that's... let him get too far. So, what did you think about the auction? Uh, it was good. I like the the change. The racing around for money was fun. Yeah, uh, I love that. I like the flashbacks, <laughs> like to all the uh, some of the previous yeah, auctions. Me it's too. been a few years since that we've had good. it, so that was cool. Yeah, it was a good twist on the auction, but oh my gosh, those fish eyes were enormous. Yeah, they were disgusting. <laughs> I wish that they put them up to their own eyes just to compare the size. Well, they were huge. It was kind of funny when Katura said, I can't make a decision, my gut's empty. That was <laughs> <laughs> good lines. <laughs> yeah, I actually thought they were cake. <laughs> 
cap cut open and it's cut it open and it would be a cake. But joke. And took it to her, licked it or smelt it. And, and, and what was with Kendra's flashback with yeah, her dad? Yeah, I those flashback sap stories that just seemed weird and forced, really. Yeah, it just made me feel a bit uncomfortable and I don't think it was necessary at all. And we're really looking forward to what everyone else has to say and thanks, thanks so for much. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, thank you. See you Bye. next time. Bye. Thanks, Bianca. Thanks, Hayden. I miss Dark Hayden's COVID voice, but I'm glad that you're doing much better. Absolutely. <laughs> Next up, we got a call from Marla. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Marla from Illinois. I just wanted to send in some quick feedback about how much I'm enjoying this season. Part of the reason why is that I don't think there are any villains who are particularly villainous. Certainly, Emily was off to a rocky start, to be sure, but she sort of figured herself out, or she's in the process of doing that, and that's sort of fun to watch. And Bruce totally reminds me of that neighbor that we all have who's going to walk by when you're raking leaves and starts talking to you, and then after just a couple seconds is going to give you some feedback on your leaf raking. And you know that they're not doing it to be mean. They they really think they're helping you. And I think Bruce has that vibe for me. And I don't mind that a lot. It does make me think of one of my actual neighbors who I will not mention. But I like this person. So I think that's what's making the season really fun for me. I enjoyed the auction. That was fun to watch. And even though I lost a safe point, I also thought it was a great tribal council. I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to wish you a happy, healthy, safe Thanksgiving. Joanne and Stacy. thanks for all you do, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Marla. Yeah, Probst mentioned that they don't cast for villain villains, the mean-to-other-people kind of villains anymore, because he, he acknowledged the value like a, a player like Russell added and how, you know, acknowledged that Russell had changed the game, the looking for idols without clues kind of thing and all that, but they don't cast for that type of person who's willing to be, I guess, that cutthroat against someone else anymore. That's not something that they focus on. So you do get different, done that? different flavors of villains. Like Bruce can have a villainy side. Emily could have a villainy side if you're looking at the cast, but they're not going for that particular yeah, model anymore. Yeah, I don't anymore. see anybody really as a villain. Bruce is just annoying. <laughs> yep. And like I said, maybe even well-intentioned, but also in a manipulative kind of way. But I still wouldn't call him a villain. I like that they cast him. I like that they went ahead and brought him back. It would have been something to see how much trouble, how much havoc he wreaked on Tika. Can you imagine how much, how many issues Carolyn would have had with him? <laughs> that oh, would have been goodness. a whole different tribe, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Mm. But it's it's interesting. Bruce there's, might not have survived. There's, there's some Carol. level of self-awareness, lack of self-awareness that puts him in that category, it seems like. Mm-hmm. At least that's what we're getting from the edit that puts him in that category. So he can be making these uh, my way or the highway kind of decisions that wreck other people's games. <laughs> That, that, I guess, adds a villainy flavor to the whole thing. Good deal. Thanks, Marlon. Next up, we got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, what a great episode. I love the auction tweaks, and the blind side was amazing. I'm looking forward to next week, but I wish Jeff would stop stealing votes without warning. Let them play. Yes, let the players play, as Parker likes to say. Here are my other observations. If you follow a dead horse to water, do you wind up at the Dead Sea? <laughs> okay. Jeff should snuff quitters' winnings and charge them for their Ponderosa stay. I agree. Here, here. Note to Julie, all liars aren't lawyers, but some lawyers are liars. <laughs> One tribe got seafood. Two tribes won seafood. Katura bought seafood. <laughs> As good. in fish eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. In auction wealth terms, Bruce went from outhouse to penthouse back to outhouse. Nurse Kelly started as Bellow Blue, then her game went Code Blue. Did anyone notice the night vision view of bats leaving Jake's Belfry at camp? No, I didn't pick up on that. I ate up the revamped food auction. 
Nice. Jake knows he'll see his name written down. He's hoping it'll be on day 26. The Women's Alliance should have been rebranded as the Early Birds Alliance. (laughs) Prospective clients seeing Jake freeze at Tribal may think twice about hiring him. Note to Kendra, the edit was absolutely right about how men think. (laughs) Kelly, the sibling is always held accountable for a tag-along little brother's deeds. If they keep the opening credits, future seasons should remove folks after they quit. Well, yeah, there, there, absolutely. There is that, but I do gain a sense of pleasure every time I see Hannah faceplant into the mud in oh. the credits. So I, I like that twist on it. Who won the auction dance-off, Kendra or Emily? <laughs> Katura doesn't see eye to eye with Jeff on food auction menu item choices. I see what you did there, Dad. (laughs) Eye to eye, fish eye. And here I thought running to the ATM for cash was bad. Never get the catch of the day at Captain Jeff's auction cafe. Bruce getting the tubes snatched from under his nose was straight out of a cartoon. (laughs) It was very cartoonish, wasn't it? Katura couldn't see her covered food item, but it saw her. Julie... Most folks brush their teeth after eating. Judging by the auction prices, Fiji's inflation must be through the roof. Austin said he preferred pizza over fish eyes. There's no accounting for taste. Bruce was watching his diet, so he only took a taste of the cake. As soon as Kelly bought the sandwich, I knew Austin would vote for her. (laughs) Not twice. She's not going to do that twice. When they showed the Kendra montage, I was convinced that she was going home. Bruce was shown fanning the flame, foreshadowing of the fire-making challenge. Sumo wrestlers should steer clear of survivor bodyweight challenges would kill them. Jeff needed a mustache to twirl when he cut open the bag of rice. That was a great moment. That was one of the best moments in the whole episode for me. To me, Julie cheated by not moving down to the knots as that shortened her rope. Well, she didn't get called for it. And her arm was straight, so I think she optimized the challenge. But yeah, it did give it her an advantage. Once again, the Survivor Gods made sure that the clear vote-out choice won immunity. (laughs) Kelly getting launched from the challenge platform looked like an Acme Coyote fail. Jeff checking his invisible book cracked me up. Jake wanted the tribe to start playing Survivor. Wish granted. Jeff fixed the auction. Does he need to do the same for dogpile voting and tribal? Next time, Bruce is scary. Three lose their votes, and Austin can't blindside D. Will we get blindsided by a showman's? Does seem to be tracking that way. Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. I can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Jeremiah. Hello, everybody. It's Jeremiah here, and oh, pains my heart once again to see a 24-point USB go away. Oh, man, that was a rough episode. <laughs> for Well, for me. And for you guys as well, because you all had the Kelly for your USB. Uh, I think a lot of us did. You know, mm-hmm. I don't regret at all picking Kelly for my USB. She nope. is a phenomenal type player. She's, she's the, the full package. She can do yep. it all for sure. You just look at her game and really she just had a lot of bad luck that whole tribe the bella tribe is just it was so fractured i think that they had such a hard time keeping everybody and getting everybody together on one page also of course her being tied to bruce didn't help so it's just a collaboration with a lot of things just didn't go her way but i definitely think she is the kind of player that if she was ever to come back i think She's one to watch. I would consider picking her again for Mm -hmm. my USB if that is the case. So what are you going to do? You know, it's just one of those circumstances. Now, obviously, in this episode, I think most people will be talking about the return of the auction, the Survivor auction, which is great. I'm I'm glad to see it back. I thought that the twist that they put on it was very interesting. A lot of discussion has been on our Facebook group about the fact that, though, is it automatically already broken? Because the way they've got this set up, if whatever money you have, you're going to try to put it all on Mm -hmm. something immediately and that's what it's going to come down to i mean so now you want to hope that you can get as much money as possible 
and just outbid everybody else right away for something. Just get something and uh, be done with it. So I don't know. I'm sure they're going to twist it or I'm sure they're going to change it around a little bit as time goes on. One idea I had is I, I know why Jeff didn't want to have or put ch- uh, put vantages into it. But what I think I would do is if we're going to split this up where the first five are for sure is happening and then the rest is, is a mystery about how many more options there's going to be. What if you told everybody that during the second half of the auction where the unknown, like we don't know how many there is going to be bid on, what if now you put a advantage in one of those potential things you're bidding on? Because then that way they won't they won't know if they have two shots or three shots at it. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm still floating around ideas in my head, but that's just one thing I came up with. Well, anyway, it it was a, a very heartbreaking episode, but good one. And of course, I can't wait till next week, which I would assume at this point, the rest of uh, Bella was in trouble. I think the only one I would I would say either Jake or Kendra's probably going to go home next week. So there's my prediction. And yeah, that's it for me, everyone. Take care. And until next time, this is Jeremiah from Southern California. Thanks, Jeremiah. All I, right. So I, Jake or Kendra instead of Katura. We're getting mm, a lot of Katuras, though. Yeah, definitely. I think they did overcorrect to force the auction to it's just like spend everything that you got, especially yeah. now that everybody doesn't have the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. And that others can scramble and get lucky and end up with lots more than someone else. So well, you hopefully know, they'll tweak it a little. It Probst w- did say it's coming back. It, they will have auctions again. Well, it was nice, though, that Bruce was so, eh, I'll get there when I get there. And da, da, da. Yeah. And that did not pay off for him. No. Nope. So. Now, I don't know if he even realizes how much it messed him up. How much it took away from him. We'll see. Thanks, Jeremiah. Next up, we got a call from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Previously on Survivor, Bruce, Bruce, and more Bruce. I can't decide whether he's going to be voted out next or whether he's going to go to the end of the game as an albatross around somebody's neck. Typically, at this point in the game, someone like him is not going to be voted out. I think he's achieved GOAT status. He has no power and nobody takes him seriously. But the only doubt that I have about Bruce at this point going to the end of the game is that albatross analogy. Is he such bad luck to be around that they will get rid of him? He's a classic GOAT, but I bet right now Kelly wishes she had gotten rid of him sooner. I like the new and improved survival. Auction. I liked the twist that they had to run through the jungle and find bamboo tubes with money in them. I like the new twist of drawing a rock to determine when the auction will end. And I love the no advantage twist. I liked the urgency that there was to spend all your money and for such little things. Me with my full belly sitting at home. I was not real impressed with pretzels and beer. We know how I feel about PB&J. But the worst item, fish eyes aside, was the bowl of candy. That one was just a sugar high and a crash in a bowl. It hurt my heart that all of that little stuff was so expensive, not a gourmet meal in the bunch. I wonder if those were coming out later. We didn't get to see about five of the items. I'm sure there was at least one more stinker in the item list, but I wonder if the later items provided more sustenance. Oh, and the toothpaste and mouthwash. I think I would have bid everything on that. If I wasn't certain about any of the other food, making my mouth feel better with a good brushing would have been a victory for me. And what you were saying, Stacy, about those first bites making you feel uncomfortable, I mean, I don't mind seeing the player stand there and take the first bite. I love seeing that, actually, but I don't like seeing the weird dancing like Emily did or like the Eric licking chocolate off Cerise's fingers moments. Blech. On to the immunity challenge and the now classic sit out for food option. I hate the deal of sitting out in order to get food, but upon thinking about it, I would immediately do it, but only because of who I would be in the game. If I played Survivor, I would be the older woman archetype. I'm physically fit, but I think that my number would eventually come up and I would be a target because I'm just not as strong as a younger person would be. And it's a little more difficult to have a consistent foothold in a group of younger people. I would think that my only chance to make it to the end would be to win an immunity and I would need food to fuel me because I'm going to get weaker faster than a younger person would. So I would take the gamble and get the food that would hopefully fuel me to go further in the game. Next time on Survivor, three people losing their vote. It's just another way for production to break down tribes and have that small tribe voting situation. There are only six votes, as usual. We haven't had a tribal council yet where everyone has voted toward one person being eliminated, have we? I don't study the game and look things up, but there have either been separate tribes, the merged tribes split up, or someone there who has lost a vote. When J. Maya got voted off, Austin gave up his vote. The tribe was split for Caleb and Sifu votes. And now Bruce didn't have a vote. Next time, three people don't have a vote. Ugh, I'm not sure that I like this. But it was an awesome episode. Best one of the season. And I'm hoping it just continues. Till next week. Thanks, Jen. Everybody voted for Caleb. It just didn't work. So they... 
they did go unanimous there. I would have liked to have seen Austin's reaction when Kelly couldn't eat the sandwich. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did rob us she of that a little bit, too right? Full. <laughs> that would have been priceless. Yeah. You know that drove him crazy. But especially if, if she would, taunted least, him, right? <laughs> if he would if he tried to eat even the fish eyes. Uh-huh. You, he, mm, I'm sure that got to him. Yep. Yeah, they probably didn't play it up, but he was he was pretty adamant that she was going to go at that point. I would imagine. Yep. Well, for multiple reasons. He had every reason to vote her out. Good stuff. Thanks, Jen. Next up, we got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul Louisiana here, and that was a wild ride when you take into account that ending, which, by the way, I did not see coming at all. I was so sure I was getting my vote off point, and even though I was this close to switching my USB to Kelly, and I would have loved to have seen her win, yeah, it was such a blind side to see her go that I loved it. But I feel sorry for her. She was really broken up about it, which just shows how much she wanted to play, which I guess helps offset the two and a half quitters we've had this season, but only by the smallest of smidges. So I had almost picked Bruce to go, but his idol scared me into picking Jake, who it turns out was left out of everything in this episode. I'll probably pick him to go next, because this poor guy has got no one on his side. But then again, Katura, Kendra, and Bruce could try to pick up the pieces now that they see that they're on the chopping block. But they're still outgunned. I suppose Emily could switch sides. She reminds me more and more of Chaos Cast with each of her decisions. But there's that connection that she has with Drew and Austin, so yeah, she's going to stay the path, I think. They'll toss votes at Bruce and Jake, leaving Bruce safe for at least one more tribal council. And you know, I've been saying that I'm not a Jake fan, but the more I look into him, I think it's because I find Mm -hmm. him odd and off-putting, I suppose. And that's no good reason to want him voted off, so I'm going to feel bad seeing him leave before Bruce, who I have much, indeed many, more issues with. Now, Bruce has been telling us that he's been playing a role being the uncle, but I think that's 98% of him in real life anyway. The dad jokes, the clowning around, all the while thinking that he's impressing everyone when all he's doing is grating on everyone's last nerve. But then there's that dominating Bruce, which he also can't control at all. I suspect that's what we'll be seeing this week, now that his closest frenemy has been voted off. I also suspect that he's going to try to intimidate Emily, which will only drive her more against him. I think it's going to be a wild ride for sure. Oh, and Austin has two immunity idols. Hmm. I wonder if he regrets not getting that sandwich now. I guess his grudge paid off handsomely in the end, but I wonder how much longer it'll take before people see him as the threat that he really is. Sandwich or not, that man makes an excellent meat shield for Drew. But... Yeah, Jake to go, those are my thoughts, and I guess I'm sticking with them. At least until I log in to make my picks, right? So everyone take care, and of course, happy Thanksgiving to all, and to all a good turkey. Bye. Thanks, Paul. You know, it would be mighty interesting if the three people that lose votes happen to be old Reba. Ooh. What if Austin, D, and Drew lose their vote, as an example? Yeah, except they're not not paired together. We don't know what the mechanism's going to be. It's just interesting to consider. So what if it ends up being the controlling alliance mm-hmm. is is down three or down two? Then, then maybe old Bello, old Bello could make a comeback potentially. Then maybe Emily would be interested in pivoting. I think Emily is always interested in going whatever serves her best, mm-hmm. it, which is exactly how she should be playing. So I think she's leaving her options open. It's possible that it would be a somewhat predictable vote. Jake or Katura seem like or Kinder. the or most Bruce. likely. I don't think Bruce is going to go anywhere. I think he's going to have the sense. He seems to have some game awareness, so yeah, he's going to he have does. the sense. If he is somehow vulnerable, if he doesn't end up winning immunity, that he... And it is. I think it is a single immunity from what they showed us in the next on... If yes. it if it doesn't he doesn't end up with it, I think that he's gonna play his idol to protect himself. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think Bruce is going I don't think he's gonna be blindsided at yeah. this point. But uh, I was going to comment on something Paul said about Jake. I have totally done a 180 to how I felt about Jake at the beginning or before the game started, you know. Mm-hmm. And how so? Just that. I like him so much better from the beginning 
uh, once I got to see him play, it was like, yeah, okay. But he just won me over through the season. I think he would be a lot of fun, actually. I was watching him even in the video where Drew was talking in his sleep and they were, you know, talking back to him. He was having conversations with them, and you could tell it just tickled Jake so much. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, man, I'd be telling him all kinds of things because he was like, <laughs> did we win? Did we win the challenge? And Jake did. And what did we get? And, you Jake know. told him, oh, yeah, you won, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, and you got a big old steak. Did, did, did we mention yeah. that, the extra one where Drew's sleep talking? Oh, I don't, I don't there's I can't a, those, remember. There's a link in the show notes for but, it. But it, it's funny. Yeah. And I thought, I really like Jake, and I think he'd be fun to hang with, that he'd make me laugh. Could be. That three people losing their votes could really flip the game on its head. For some reason, that didn't occur to me immediately. I just assumed it would somehow penalize the, the old bellow folks <laughs> somehow, that it would immediately Cause, drop cause on them. we got used to that. Yeah. But maybe not. You could shake things up dramatically. Could. Hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you to everybody who took time to share your thoughts and predictions and your insights with us this week. We really enjoyed it, and we always appreciate hearing from you. I want to say a big thanks to David, Doris, Tara for your donations. We greatly appreciate your support. It helps us with our operating costs, and that makes a big difference. Thank you so much for that. You're very generous. We appreciate it. And if you play in JSFL, don't forget to make your week nine picks for one person voted off and four people who will still be safe at the end of the episode. So every week they seem to have some little something in the next on that makes it even harder to make your choices. Not a slam dunk, <laughs> yeah. This season it's like, oh, but what about... And a lot of times I, I forget about it, you know, and then I decide something and then i go oh wait a minute but they said and i better rethink this well it certainly leaves us looking forward to the next episode we'll be back on wednesday with our next recap have a good one